Deep sedation is a medical procedure that accompanies the patient to an artificial sleep. It thus makes another medical procedure, such as surgery, more acceptable and enjoyable. Let's find out together what it is with today's video. Hello and welcome back to med for care Today's topic is, the deep sedation. What is deep sedation? In the field of anesthesiology, it is that medical procedure which induces a state of general relaxation in the patient with an artificial falling asleep, obtained with the use of one or more sedative agents, which reduce the state of excitement or anxiety, until inducing the sleep. Do you know what are the differences between deep sedation and general anesthesia? Deep sedation provides that the patient sleeps, dreams, but if necessary, with a tactile stimulus or an intense call can be awakened. With general anesthesia, on the other hand, sleep is much deeper and one cannot wake up. In more technical terms, during general anesthesia the patient completely loses the state of consciousness while with deep sedation the artificially induced state of depression of consciousness can be restored, at least partially, by intense tactile or pain stimulation. The degree of sedation depends on the individual susceptibility to drugs. Each subject responds differently. For this reason, to obtain the desired effect it is advisable to administer drug test doses to evaluate the individual response, starting with conscious sedation and then reaching deep sedation, with gradually increasing drug doses. What are the differences between conscious and deep sedation? In conscious sedation the ability to respond to verbal commands and tactile stimuli remains almost unchanged, while in deep sedation the state of depression of consciousness is more accentuated and it may be required to act actively to keep the airways accessible. The state of general relaxation of the patient and deep sleep is particularly indicated during surgical interventions of a certain duration, during which it would be annoying for the patient to remain awake. Typical examples of the application of deep sedation are orthopedic operations on the lower limbs, such as hip or knee replacements. With deep sedation, the patient does not perceive noises, dialogues, movements of the environment that surrounds him. Therefore it is particularly suitable for those procedures, such as some surgical interventions, in which anesthesia can be performed in a localized way, i.e. with spinal anesthesia or with a nerve block. In this case, the absence of pain is obtained with local anesthetics, but the patient can sleep to avoid discomfort, such as long surgery times or intraoperative positions that are difficult to maintain in a conscious state. Deep sedation is used for even major surgery, such as non-destructive reconstructive cosmetic surgery operations, such as breast augmentation, liposuction, abdominoplasty major orthopedic surgery, such as reduction of dislocations or bone fractures hip or knee replacement surgery with prostheses, or upper limbs, vascular surgery of the upper or lower limbs, complex or extensive dental procedures, such as multiple tooth extractions, oral surgery, or periodontal treatments, urological procedures, such as cystoscopy or lithotripsy. Deep sedation is also used successfully when performing endoscopic maneuvers for exploratory or interventional purposes. In all these cases, Anesthesia generally takes place locally or regionally, example, by placing local anesthetic drugs near the nervous structures that must not perceive pain. It is important to know that deep sedation requires a preoperative evaluation. The decision to submit the patient to deep sedation belongs electively to the anesthesiologist resuscitator, the only specialist authorized to perform it, except in emergency urgency conditions when it can also be performed by non-anesthetist doctors for specific needs. If deep sedation is required, an anesthesiological visit must be performed, during which the patient is well informed and expresses his consent to the procedure. In fact, it is necessary for the patient to have an in-depth conversation with the anesthesiologist in order to examine the patient's clinical history and detect the presence of possible contraindications to the procedure. Generally. After having collected all the data concerning the patient's global health and the list of drugs taken, some routine blood tests may be required, possibly accompanied by a chemical physical and morphological urine test. The preoperative visit therefore ends with the signing of the informed consent form by the patient. 
the objective examination and the anamnestic phase are two indispensable phases for the correct preoperative evaluation of the patient, because from these investigations any coagulation deficit or the detection of vital parameters suggestive of pathologies may emerge, such as hypertension. It is good practice for the patient to come to the operation fasting completely for at least 7 to 8 hours with associated liquid limitation in the previous 3 to 4 hours and accompanied by an acquaintance for the return home. The drugs that are used to achieve deep sedation do not belong to a single category. It is therefore important to predict the interdependence relationships that can be established by administering a combination of different drugs. The classes of drugs most commonly used in deep sedation are benzodiazepines, psychotropic drugs that have anxiolytic and sedative hypnotic properties. Their purpose is to induce sleep. Drugs that belong to this category are midazolam, diazepam, triazolam, and loprazolam. They can be administered orally or intravenously, but also intranasally in children or uncooperative patients. Sedative or anesthetic drugs such as barbiturates, propofol, and halogenated anesthetic gases. Since they can lead to temporary loss of consciousness, the rationality of their use is necessarily entrusted to an anesthesiologist resuscitator. We now come to the execution techniques. Deep sedation is usually induced intravenously. In rare cases it can be induced by resorting to other methods of administration, namely, through the enteral or inhalation route. The intravenous technique is the one that offers the highest safety and reliability margins and generally involves the administration of a combination of drugs. The anesthetist will be present throughout the procedure as well as instrumental monitoring devices for cardiorespiratory function and a venous access for catheterization. The patient is monitored in his main vital parameters, as happens during general anesthesia. Heart rate blood pressure and respiratory rate, and tissue oxygen saturation are checked. Once the procedure has been performed, the patient must gradually recover his state of consciousness, generally a recovery room is set up, while in other cases the patient recovers directly in the operating room. It is the precise duty of the anesthesiologist to wait for the complete recovery of the patient, constantly monitoring his vital parameters, including heart rate, blood pressure, and respiratory rate. Attention, the patient must be accompanied to his home by a family member or an acquaintance, because some side effects such as drowsiness and slow reflexes can last throughout the day. There is large individual variability in drug response. Therefore it often happens that the adequate dose for one patient is too much for another, and that therefore we witness a loss of effectiveness of breathing, apnea or an excessive reduction in airway control due to lack of reflexes. In this case the anesthetist will have to assist breathing until the patient recovers it autonomously and naturally. Also, the side effects that you may experience are Transient sensory disturbance, with paresthesia or hypoesthesia, usually related to the local anesthesia given during the procedure. Muscle weakness. Lowering of blood pressure. Cardiac conduction disturbances due to overdose of sedative and or anesthetic drugs. Visual hallucinations due to side effects of medications used, especially ketamine measure. In conclusion, deep sedation is a procedure that boasts excellent safety margins and has wide application in anesthesia, in particular to conduct surgical interventions with local anesthesia and sedation rather than performing a complete general anesthesia, which can lead to greater hardships and risks. We have now reached the end of today's video, we hope you enjoyed it. If you found it useful, support us with a nice like, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell to be notified every time our new video comes out. See you soon on Med4Care.